When you get to catch a fish for the first time in a new way, it really brings you back to the first fish you caught, the first time you ever landed a nice one. And the feeling of water going through your feet is a very uneasy feeling. You get away from people, you just pack your waders on and kind of disappear. And when that net scooped under and that fish came up, we were all just extremely excited for him, for us. <laughs> Smoking downstream. <laughs> Right now we're in Colebrook, New Hampshire. Um, we got here with a 13 hour truck drive, which was a nice smooth trip to the mountains. And uh, yeah, it's been pretty pretty eventful. Just getting here was pretty cool. Was totally new scenery for myself, especially. I've never been this far north, so it was pretty cool. So everybody, everybody woke up at six, a little groggy, had a long night the night before. We pull up and it was a little intimidating to be honest with you. Um, everybody got their waders, our guides showed up, waders already on, we're standing there looking like we're straight from Virginia Beach. So we uh, showed up to Lobstick Outfitters and uh, it, was, it was our first day. I think everybody was a little nervous. I have not fly fished in probably 15 years. So this all started about two years ago. We came up here to shoot the bird video. We got to see the streams, and Brad was telling me how incredible the, the uh, fly fishing is here. What? Well, fast forward two years later, here we are. We got Mark and Logan up here from the shop, and we've been wanting to take them on a trip and do something really cool with them, something outside of their box as well. I know Mark goes a little bit back home, but this is all kind of new to all of us. So yeah, we're heading down to um below First Dam. This is First Connecticut Lake right here. And then we're gonna go below First Dam and fish what we call the Trophy Stretch, which is a 2.3 mile stretch down to Lake Francis. And uh, we're gonna start right below the dam um, and just hit some of that water. And, you know, the flows are coming out a little over 400 CFS right now, which is high because of all the rain, but usually it's about 150. Oh, we've this year's definitely been different. The high water has, uh, all the rain has really, really affected things. I mean, again, the fish are around, it's, and it's not that you can't catch them, but you've, uh, you've just got to work a little differently. And, you know, I mean, go out and explore. We always just tell people, hey, if it's not fishing here, you know, we've got remote ponds, we've got small streams. You can go bass fishing, you can go do other stuff. So it's like, we have, we have options, lots of options. Well, we'll go see what we gotta do. We'll get out of here and get decked out. In New Hampshire this year, there's been like a 30 year record on, on rain for this summer. From what I understand, the rivers are running about three times faster. So some of the places that were extremely difficult to cross typically are just, you know, hopping on rocks and a little sketchy at times. So again, typically when we're, we get ready to go fishing, we just pull up to the marina, jump in the boat and we're off. This is not so much. You pull up, you put your waders on, you can hear a creek running in the background. You don't know, you might have to hike half a mile to it. And it's not the easiest hike sometimes. I mean, for one, you're carrying almost a nine foot fishing rod through the forest and it gets hung up and big rocks, big banks, you know, sliding down. I mean, we fell a few times. I've caught more trees on the fly rod walking than I did. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You, you're ducking and going under logs, over logs, have a nine foot rod in front of you. So you have to watch every step on the water and in the woods when you're traveling. I mean, you just don't take off and start walking. One, two. So you see your little seam right here. So what you have is that that current comes up, there's a rock up above which breaks the, the water. And so behind that rock, anytime you see that white water, that white water is what we call a pillow. And the reason that the pillow is there is because there's some sort of obstruction. The water comes down, hits the obstruction, forms a pillow, 
on the other side, the downstream side of that pillow is a pocket or a slick. And that's what we want to identify, right in there. So that's just a natural spot that the fish are going to hang out. They don't have to expend as much you energy. Put it behind the pillow? Yes. Yeah. Yep. Yep. And in this case, our pillow is right here on the edge. Okay. Yep. Yep. So, and what you want to do when you get to a section, and we'll notice it a little bit more when we get down there, you'll be like, pillow, 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 pillow. Okay, I'm going to hit this one first, and then I can walk into that one, then I can hit the next one and walk into the, you know, we're not concerned about casting all the way across the river. We're going to keep everything within basically a rod length of us. We're going to take it from there. So back at home, I love saltwater fishing, whether that be inshore or offshore. I love all the aspects of catching fish in the ocean, whether that be flounder, tog, tuna, mahi, marlin. I mean, I absolutely love it all. I would say 98% of the time I'm in the ocean or inlets, but I don't typically fly fish, you know, even inshore. Here it's a little bit different. You really can't use a conventional spinning rod to actually catch these fish. You have to use a very primitive form of, of fishing, which is fly fishing. And I mean, you, you're everything. You are the cast, you're pretty much the drag at most points. And it's just absolutely fantastic. Frustrating for sure. It's totally hard for me to catch a fish on fly. I probably lost more fish because I'm so used to that hook set, that feeling the drag, you know, something plates it and pulls it. But it's so exciting because when you see these fish and comparatively to what we're used to, but the fight and the strength of those little fish, and you're like, how can this thing do this? Meanwhile, we got 400 and some cubic feet per minute river, six knots running, and this little fish is dogging us out. And when you're doing trout, like any fish, they have that mucus membrane I on them. Yep. Yeah, I saw I that, yeah. Yep. So I was watching you wet the hands, and that way you can get him in, and I'm just gonna let him go, and he's he's good. He's, he's back in the current, and he's gonna take off. I felt it just like you said. I wasn't watching the dry as much as I felt the hit. You know, I felt that little, mm -hmm. that was good. Very cool. This is the first for me. I've, I've thrown a fly a couple of times, cracked the whip, snapped the fly off, and put it down and grabbed a spinning reel but it's definitely a whole nother experience. Once you pick it up, it gets, it gets fun, it gets easy. You start reading the water better. You start seeing pillows and seeing seams. And once you get it figured out, it definitely, I wouldn't say it gets easy, but it, this thing definitely gets easier. Don't get a bite, change the fly. Don't get a bite, change the fly. All of a sudden you get a bite on one fly and it's like, all right, that's it. Everybody changes, that's what they're eating. That's one of the craziest things about this. We're just sitting baits on the bottom or casting baits or dragging baits and it is what it is. They eat it, they eat it. Where this is like, I mean, you're changing baits faster than any, any other fishing I've ever seen. Box full of 100 flies and you use 40 of them in and out. It's crazy. It looks moosey though. It looks real moosey. Girl moose, big boy moose go. <laughs> seen that movie? Princess Diaries. Catching a fish on a fly is way harder than it looks. That's all I can say. You catch a one pound fish and it feels like an absolute whale. On those rods that are nine foot long, you've got six pound test line, you got six miles an hour or six knots of current, and they can swim up, down, and they can go anywhere they want and you never would never guess it. Um, hooking them is, is difficult in the first place, but actually keeping the fish tight and then being able to land the fish, whole different ball game than anything I've done. I mean, if you try to horse it, it's over. Oh my goodness. That is, oh, that is freaking cool. Good job. Of all the fish that I've caught, that is freaking cool. <laughs> it's crazy. Like, you get, ex you get so excited cool. about something Literally, this big, right? right? <laughs> that is cool, man. Matching the hatch is definitely a true statement. It's, you know, it's in the fly world. Everybody uses it and everything else fishing related, but when you're picking up a rock and looking under it and saying, oh, this is a stone fly or oh, this is a caddis worm or whatever, it, it you're you're truly matching the hatch versus tying some different you know colors on and seeing what happens. It's it's a true match the hatch scenario. Match the hatch, baby. Yeah, it's awesome. Yeah. <laughs> the 
The experience was awesome. Two of us have fly fished before, two of us haven't. And just to see the camaraderie of all of us together and just wishing everybody the best. Everybody was rooting for everybody. Had a big one on. <laughs> There was a there there was a time when we were upstream from Justin and he was fighting a really big fish and it took him probably it seemed like 25 minutes to get that and it was probably five minutes and we were hooting and hollering and we just had so much fun just really hoping that Justin was going to get this in and when that net scooped under and that fish came up we were all just extremely excited for him for us I mean we're all in it together and it was just an awesome experience. <laughs> yeah baby! Pretty one. There we go. We'll let him do it. So I haven't, I haven't fly fished in several years and uh, it was great to get back into it. It was great to bring a group of people together that actually have not have that much experience with fly fishing. And it was great to see their enthusiasm and it's just a completely different way of fishing. I think anybody that likes fishing should honestly try fly fishing. You're so much more than the gears of a typical spinning rod or conventional reel. You're, you're, you're a lot of everything. I mean, the fly reel is one-to-one -one if, if you're even able to use the reel in it. There's so much that goes into fly fishing and you really just get overtaken by it that you, if, you, if you ever have any prom, go fly fishing because you literally can't concentrate about anything. It's just consuming in all aspects of fishing. It's not just about the fishing too. I mean, it's just the culture, the people, the everything around it. Like when you travel to places, I've never been this far north and definitely never been this far north to fish. My previous experience with fly fishing is nothing. <laughs> I've never done it. Like I said, I don't know anything about it, you know, other than what I've seen on TV and watched in videos and other seen in magazines. You know, freshwater, saltwater, fly, casting, you know, spinning, it, it all applies. It's still fishing at the end of the day. With fly fishing in general, even in the store, when somebody came up to ask me something about fly fishing, I had to direct to somebody else who had an idea. At least now I have an idea, foundation, you know, and I think I'd like to get into it a little bit more and try some different species with it. So lucky for me, I'm pretty blessed to be able to see different aspects of fishing from pier fishing offshore inshore um, but fly fishing is a completely new thing to me and it's really interesting to be able to see where people get that love of fishing but in a different sense yeah it brings you back when you get to see when you get to catch a fish for the first time in a new way it really brings you back to the first fish you caught the first time you ever landed a nice one and it, it really shows you why we do what we do why we have the love of fishing that we do um, and like I said, it doesn't matter if you're on a pier or if you're on a boat, if you, as long as you can bring that love back, that's what we're here for. And it's, it's incredible to be able to see that. This trip's been a truly eye-opening experience for me. Um, I'm very excited to bring some fly rods down to Virginia Beach and try to see if I can do it in my own waters and salt, um, see what happens. I'm fired up for it. Yeah. <laughs>